we were busy looking at that fungus and we heard the elephants. And look at this, they're coming in right behind us. This is as good a view as you'll ever get of elephants on foot. And we're right up on a big termite mound. And so for where we are, it's quite nice and safe. And the elephants are going to have a huge drink right behind us. Isn't this absolutely incredible? And you can see it's quite a large herd. So we just will spring because we don't want them to get out our audio and to be able to then get a little bit too excited and come up towards us but we're just going to have to sit very very quietly at times so you can see they're drinking this is so so cool now hopefully they're going to just pass us without too many problems we're obviously up on a termite mound, which is a much safer place to be, but my voice is very low because they are very close. They're probably no more than 20 meters from where we are, and this is the only cover we've got, so best for us just to stay nice and quiet and not move too much. You can also hear hyena calling in the distance. So there's a hyena somewhere around quarantine area that's calling maybe towards the den, but it seems to be getting quite crowded around the water hole. Everybody's pushing and shoving now. It's not a very big water hole for the size of a sort of herd that we have. So it's quite interesting just to watch the behavior. But they must have been very thirsty because they came to this pan very quickly. They moved from the drainage line and you can see every now and then they're trying to smell. So they probably can pick up the scent that's drifting off this termite mound that we're close by. Also our sort of talking is not very far from them so I'm sure they can hear there is some sort of disturbance near them. But isn't this cool? It is the most special feeling to be on foot with a herd of elephants like this. It really, really is. You can hear them sucking up lots of trunkfuls. So they've obviously come from feeding in the early hours of this morning and this is typical of elephants they often do drink in the mornings you'll find that they'll spend their kind of time feeding while it's still cool and then they come in and have a nice drink and then back out into shadier areas to then spend the, the sort of day now they obviously haven't f heard or seen us just yet because they're very much concentrated on the water which is great for us it means that they are completely oblivious to our presence which is exactly what we wanted so we had to kind of run to get to this termite mound in time because they were almost running to the water hole itself and so we've now managed to get ourselves on top here now it's okay we don't have to worry too much it's a nice steep termite mound so perfect AKA PT Watcher, you're wondering why we're safe on top of a termite mound. Well, it's two reasons. One is this particular termite mound is very, very steep. So for an elephant to get up here is not going to be very easy. They can't jump, so they have to try and climb up, and it becomes quite tough for them to get up here. They could potentially if they wanted to, but it's not an easy prospect. The other side of it is elephants are big animals, and they're not used to anything else out here being as big as they are. So when you're on top of a termite mound, you physically look and appear a lot larger and you almost stand above their eye line and that to them is intimidating so they find this sort of change in the fact that you're so much bigger on top of the termite mound and taller that it's they then sort of back down from that and try and steer clear of you because they're now a little bit more intimidated by what you're doing so that's why you get up onto termite mounds it also means that your scent is not blowing down on the ground level and it's much harder for them to smell you or see you when you're a little bit further up remember they're used to looking down on everything and seeing threats from low not from high up and so when you're up a little bit you tend to kind of miss their eye line and you don't get that same sort of scent drifting onto them so it's just a much safer place to be and remember out here in the bush when you're walking you don't have too many other options climbing a tree is not a good idea we saw just now with that knob thorn where the fungus was growing how those trees can be pushed over very very easily so your best structure is something quite solid that you can get much higher and sort of be in a much higher level to be able to then sort of determine what these elephants are going to do and then sort of back them down if they do get aggressive with you you can see the one female on the right has now picked up that there is something around look at how she's sniffing you can see her ears also out lifting her head so she's just checking what's going on around making sure that her herd is safe while they're all preoccupied drinking obviously while they're drinking they're making a lot of noise and are not really watching what's going on so you'll find there's always one older female that just kind of checks what's happening and I'm sure 
they're going to probably disappear as quickly as they came. Once they've had a drink, they're not going to probably linger here for too long. They'll then start to head into the thickets and probably try and move into some more shady areas as that sun gets up. It's going to get quite hot today. It can already feel the sun has got a bit of warmth to it. So I would imagine that by the sort of 10 o'clock it's going to be quite warm out here and that for them means that they'd rather be in the shade. So Harley, you're wondering if we recognize specific elephants. Well, yes, we do. Um, it's generally elephants that have some sort of abnormal um, tusk or there's some sort of tear in the ears that is very distinct. We've got the one herd where there's a female that has half a trunk that has unfortunately she lost a bit of a trunk to a snare. So there are sort of individuals with that kind of look about them that we can recognize. It's not always that easy. Um, this particular herd we have been seeing quite a bit of over the last few days. There's a particular male that has a pair of tusks that grow outwards like this. So we have seen him a few times, but it is difficult. I mean, there's over 18,000 elephants, so sometimes you don't recognize certain ones. Uh, there's other herds that we know very well. There's one particular herd that we see here, which is a really big herd, and it's a female that's got this, this tusk that grows back towards her body and is very long. And that herd we know is, is we call her Fang, so we know that herd. And then there's a couple others that are around that we know. The bull elephants, actually, funny enough, are much easier to recognize because they tend to be on their own, and so you take much more notice of each individual. Whereas with the herds, as you can see, there's so many elephants here to kind of recognize each one every time is very, very tough. But is this just not the most incredible way to start your day? Really, really special. So, David, now in a sort of single sitting like this, they can drink up to 100 litres, but generally they will sort of only have a few litres at a time. Each trunkful is about 8 litres, so in a day they'll drink, a, if it's a very hot day, up to 150 litres in one day, but otherwise they will just kind of come to water holes at regular times, have 20, 30 litres of water, and then carry on again. But look, you can see the adult females have noticed that there's something not right here. So I'm just going to keep my voice down now and just let them see if they're going to move off. Look how amazing all the babies in the middle and all the adults to the edges. See that? So that is a defensive posture now. They are trying to just make sure that there's, if there is a threat that the babies are all protected. So you can see everybody, all the big adults outside, babies in. And we make sure that the herd is safe and they will then move off eventually. But she's definitely caught wind of us. You can see how she's just turned her trunk and smelling. It's a little one that's got a bit of mud up its nose probably. You see how they use their ears as well. That female there, with her ears out like that, it's not because she's getting upset. It's just because she's trying to listen. So with that ear out, it acts like a big satellite dish. It can catch more sound waves, and it helps for her to be able to hear what's going on. And that's why we need to whisper a little bit, because if we make a lot of noise, you'll find that these elephants will hear us very quickly, and they'll come and investigate what the sound is. And that's not what we want. We want them to be able to kind of move off without us interfering with their lives or disturbing them in any way. So hopefully once they finish drinking, and this is what she's doing. She's just waiting for the rest to finish drinking. Once everybody's done drinking, you'll find they'll probably move off quite quickly. But it's as normal as the young boys that are holding everybody back. They're still busy drinking and playing around. But this is phenomenal. It really is. So, Stefan, you're wondering why it's dangerous on foot with elephants and not in a vehicle. Well, there's a simple reason for that. Is mankind has been hunting elephants for the last kind of century and we have really really destroyed massive sort of populations of elephants and all the elephants that we see here in the Kruger ultimately came from Mozambique and Zimbabwe because prior to that there were actually no elephants in Kruger so when the Kruger National Park was started there was no elephants in this area and so all of these elephants have at some stage in their generations gone through a phase where they've seen some sort of 
activity from people that is in a negative light. And so they see us on foot as a predator, much the same way that they would see lions or leopard or hyenas. And that's why they're so much more aggressive. They fear us and that fear out here means that they drives them to try and protect their herd and their babies. And when they try to protect that, obviously us as people, we have no defense against an animal of this size. You're talking about some of these females that are over four tons and are just pure muscle. They are powerful, powerful individuals. And so we just can't keep in any way defend ourselves other than with a rifle. And so in a vehicle, they haven't had that same issue. They haven't been killed from vehicles. They haven't been shot from vehicles. They haven't been hurt from vehicles. And so they trust a vehicle. They almost see a vehicle as like a zebra or an impala or a wildebeest that moves around and makes noise, but it's not a threat to them. Whereas people on foot is a threat. And that is why there's such a different behavior between the two. There we go. Look, everybody's relaxed now. Even the female that had her ears out, she's completely relaxed. She's got a trunk over her tusk now, which is generally a sign that she's not too wary anymore and that she's starting to calm down a bit. This is absolutely amazing. Look at the little baby. The baby's just kind of resting its leg. It seems like its one leg is tired of standing, so it's got its left leg up in the air just resting. And what you might find is that they might start dust bathing a bit. What often happens is after a bit of a drink like this, you'll find elephants will actually start to dust bathe. So they'll go and take soil and throw it on top of themselves and make sure that they are covered in dust and just exfoliate that skin to make sure that the skin is in good condition. Now we're going to sit with our elephants a while longer because this is just the most magical experience. While we do that, I believe James has managed to find those hyenas that we're calling.